not for us. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So we are going to start another week and this is almost the last uh, week that we are going to develop in this course because um, ending this day, we are going to have just five more days. And we are going to um, end this course the next week on Thursday. So um, we are almost ending this course and it was a very, very good um, a moment and time. And um, I think that you have done almost all the, the work in the platform. So that's very good. So now we are going to start with the uh, topic that we were developing in the last week. And the last uh, topic that we were talking about was um, the verb tense. And we were talking about the, the tenses, the three tenses that we have in English, that is past, present, and future. And we were talking about the past perfect we were almost ending the past tense. And today we are going to end this topic with the present tense and the future tense. Then we are going to have a, some vocabulary for tomorrow, I guess, or if we can end this a, topic of tenses today, we are going to have a new vocabulary. And then we have, a. Um, new topics that we are going to develop in these last days. So we are going to start and we are going to see where we were in the last week. So we were here uh, the last week and we are going to continue from this uh, topic. We were saying the structure for or, or the formula for the past participle. So, in this case, um, let's see, we are going to remember this part. So let's see this one. So we have here the past tenses and we have uh, the first one that is a simple past and we are uh, seeing what are the uh, structures and the information for this a simple past, we have the formula, we have some uh, verbs in regular uh, form, we have some verbs in irregular form, and we have some specification for these. And we were seeing the formula for questions. And we have next one that is uh, the past perfect. That is the second one that we were uh, developing at the last um, week. That was the past perfect. So now we are here in the formula for past perfect that it says that we need uh, to write had plus past participle to form this uh, tense. And when we use this past uh, uh, participle or past perfect, and it says that what is the difference between past perfect and simple past? It was the question that we were developing at the last week. The, what is the difference between uh, both of them? And we say that when we are talking about some point in the past and want to reference an event that happened even earlier, using the past perfect allows you to convey the sequence of the events. It's also clear and more specific. And then we are going to uh, talk about when not to use the past perfect. In this case, we are not going to use the past perfect when you are not trying to convey some sequence of events. If your friends ask what you did after you discovered the graffiti, they will be confused if you say, I had cleaned in off the door. They likely be wondering what happened next because using the past perfect implies that your action of cleaning the door occurred before something else happened. 
but you don't say what that something else is. The something else doesn't always have to be explicitly mentioned, but context needs to make it clear. In this case, there is no context, so the past perfect doesn't make sense. So in the cases in which we are um, trying to have a sequence of events, it's obviously that we have first, second, third, and all of that. And uh, when we have this sequence of events, we can use this uh, past perfect, but in the case that we don't follow that steps and don't have the sequence very clear, we can we cannot use it because it be it will be very confused. Cuando usamos el past perfect es para hablar de secuencias de cosas que han pasado. Si no llevamos esa secuencia de cosas y no tenemos eh, qué pasó después de qué, vamos a hacerlo bastante eh, unclear y no vamos a poder utilizar el past perfect. Siempre tenemos que tener una secuencia en orden. We can uh, say that uh, we eat food, then we watch a movie because it is not the point because we need to do something um, before that. Maybe we go to the supermarket and buy some uh, vegetables, some fruits, some chicken soup, whatever we want to buy in the supermarket. Then we cook the food and after that we eat the, the food and then we watch a movie. So we need to have a sequence of actions. And if something is missing, it is not uh, the point to use the past perfect tense. Then how to make the past perfect negative? We have the have plus past participle to create sentence in past perfect tense. But how can we use this past perfect tense in negative? So it is very simple because we have this formula and then we have to do something very easy. That is adding something uh, between this uh, formula. So we have this one have plus not plus the past participle. So in this case, it's not complicated to create this kind of sentences because we have this uh, formula and we are using it in positive sentences. So in this case, we are going to use the not to make this uh, sentence negative. So it says, we look for witnesses, but the neighbors had not seen toothless in the act. If Toothless had not included his own name in the message, we will have no idea who was behind it. So the example, we are going to make it easy. We look at or witnesses, but the neighbors had not seen, had, Plus not, plus past participle. In the act. So we have here the structure. We look for witnesses, but the neighbors had not seen him in the act. Buscamos por eh, personas que nos pudieran dar eh, idea de lo que había pasado. Eh, pero los vecinos no lo habían visto en el acto. So, that's the structure. Had not seen him in the act. Then, how can we make this uh, formula or this structure to create a question? So, the formula for this one We have, we're going to change the structure a little bit. So we have first had the subject plus past participle. Then of course we have the complement plus the question mark.
as Mark So we're going to mark this one, this, like this. So we have this uh, question. Has Mark caused trouble in other neighborhoods before? Had Mark caused trouble in other neighborhoods before? So it's very simple because we have um, some kind of information or experience creating questions. So it is not uh, very complicated to create this kind of question because uh, we already know that in the case that we have to create some question, we are going to change a little bit the formula and we are going to place the had, or in this case, we can uh, call it the complement or auxiliary part of the sentence. We are going to place at the beginning of the sentence. Then we are going to write the subject then we are going to use the verb in uh, whatever um, tense we are going to use. So in this case, we are going to place in the third place the past participle of this verb. Then we are going to write the complement and the question mark that is very important that we uh, write at the end of the sentence. But it's not really complicated to create this kind of sentence. So we are going to have some examples of a uh, common regular verbs in past tense. So we have a infinitive plus the second one is past perfect and the last one is negative. So we have here to ask, then we have to work, then we have to call and to use. And in past perfect, this one is had as had work. Call. and had used. And in negative, had not, had not worked yet. And had not used. So this is very simple because we have the infinity power in which we are using the to and the verb. Yes, in this case, when we are using have, it is not necessary to use an auxiliary because in this case, we know that we are using this structure like when we are using the verb to be, uh, in past, because in that case, that is the, we can say that they are itself like the auxiliary part because they are not the main verb. And in that cases, uh, they are auxiliary in, the, in those cases. So have and to be, have similar um, functions in, in, the, in the structures in which we are using them. So in that cases, we are not going to use another auxiliary because they function like that in those uh, structures. So in that case, is um, you have uh, this right. So that's that's the the point. So then we have this uh, some examples of irregular verbs in uh, this uh, tense. So we have. The first one is the regular verbs, and now we have 
the common irregular verbs. There are some more. So let's see. We are going to write eight of them. So in this case, I mean seven. Okay, in this case, infinitive. Then we have past perfect. Then we have negative again. So we have, in this case, we have the verb to be, to have, to do, to say, to get, to make, And we have to go. So in past perfect, obviously we are going to add had at the beginning, then we are, are going to uh, write the past perfect of these uh, verbs. So we have had, in this case is being, because it is the not the, the simple past, it is the past perfect. So in this case, we are not going to use was or were, in this case, we are going to use being. Then to have, obviously had, and then had again, had had, had done, then had said, So uh, to get in this case, we are going to write had gotten. So in this case, um, the past participle of to get is gotten in American English, but in British English, the past participle is got. But in this case, we're using them, uh, the American English. So in this case, we are going to write gotten in this case. To make is to, or in this case, have made and have gone. And of course, in negative is almost the same, just adding the not between the had and the verb. Had not been, had not had, had not done. Had not said, had not gotten, had not made, and had not gone. So now we have some examples of regular and irregular um, uh, verbs that we can use in this structure. So. Now we are going to continue with another tense because we are uh, talking about the different tenses or um, parts that have the past tense. Now we are going to um, talk about the past continuous tense and we are going to know what is the past continuous tense. Of course, we are going to see the structures, examples and um, all of that that we were uh, learning with this one. So in this case, we have past continuous. The past continuous tense, also known as the past progressive tense, refers to a continuing action or state that was happening at some point in the past. The past continuous tense is formed by combining the past tense of to be, that is was and were, with the verse present participle with ing word. So in this case, uh, it refers to uh, continuing action or a state 
that was happening at some point in the past. The past continues is formed by combining the past tense of to be, and we have here was and were. So we are going to mark this one because this is the important part of this uh, tense. We have the past tense of to be with the verbs the first present participle. And we're going to write ing word. So it is a combination of uh, these ones. There are many situations in which this verb tense might be used in a sentence. For example, it is often used to describe condition that exists in the past. The sun was shining every day that summer. As I spoke, the children were laughing at my cleverness. In this case, we are uh, using this structure for uh, describing a condition that exists in the past. It also can be used to describe something that was happening continuously in the past when another action interrupted. And we have the audience was applauding until he fell off the stage. I was making dinner when she arrived. So we're going to write like this because we have some specific situation in which we use this structure. The number one is, um, it is often used to describe conditions that exist in the past. And we have the example. And the example says, the sun was shining every day that summer. So in this case, it's talking about the situation or the condition. In this case, it's talking about that the sun shine every day that summer. That was a very um, a good situation because maybe they were in the in the beach or something like that. So we have here the structure was shining. Then we have the other way in which we use this structure. And it says it can also be used to describe something that was happening continuously. in the past when another action interrupted. So we have the example. I was making dinner when she arrived. 
So in this case, it's talking about when we are doing something, but something else happened that maybe um, make uh, that person uh, stop doing that action. So we have the number one that is uh, often used to describe condition that exists in the past, something that was happening at the moment. And the second one is talking about um, to describe something that was happening uh, continuously uh, in the past when another action interrupted. Last, like in the uh, example that it says, I was making dinner, make, maybe. This um, is a very common action that this person uh, did in the past. But in this case, something interrupt the action of cooking. So in this case, I was making dinner when she arrived. So in that moment, she was making the dinner or he was making the dinner and someone arrived and he or she needs to stop. Also, the past continuous can shed light on what, what's happening at a precise time in the past. So also, it talk about a precise time in the past. And we have the example. And it says, at six o'clock, I was eating dinner. So in this case, it's when we use a specific time in the past, as in the example, at six o'clock, we have the specific time at six o'clock, I was eating a dinner. I was performing this action of eating. So I have a specific time in the past. It can also refer to a habitual action in the past. And we have another one and it says, it can also refer action in the past. And we have the example. She was talking constantly in class in those days. So in that case, it's something that uh, what's happening in that time that was uh, constantly or something ha habitual or something that is performed almost all the days. And in the example, we, we have this one. She was talking constantly in class in those days. That is something that she did in all the classes. So it's an action that it's performed almost every day. And it says, one final caution, so the irregularities are few. Not every verb is suited to describing a continuous action. Searching verbs can be used in the past continuous tense. And one common example is the verb to arrive. And we have some examples. At noon, he was arriving. At noon, he arrived. So in some cases, um, we have some verbs that are not very uh, good using in this kind of tenses. So um, it's better not to use them. And we have the verb to arrive. It is not like it sounds very good in this kind of tenses. Now we are going to end the uh, past tense and we are going to uh, talk about the past perfect continuum. That is the last part of this tense. So we have here past tense continuous. Past perfect continuous, I mean.
And it says the past perfect continuous tense, also known as the past perfect progressive tense, shows that an action that is started in the past continues until another time in the past. The past perfect continuous tense is constructing uh, using has been plus the verbs present participle root plus ing. So it says it shows an action. It shows an action that is started in the past. Continue up until another time in the past. So we have an action that is started in the past, but has a, like a continuation of this action happening in some time also in the past. In this case, we are now going to talk about that action that uh, begin in the past and continue in the present and even in the future. In this case, it's also happening in the past. So it begins in the past and continue in the past, not in the present. So <clears throat> we have the construction. is constructed using had been plus the first present participle and we have root plus ing. This is the structure that we have here. Had been plus the verb present participle root plus ing. Unlike the present perfect continuous, which indicates an action that began in the past and continue up to the present, the past perfect continuous is a verb tense that indicates something that began in the past, continued in the past, and also ended at a definite point in the past. So we have some difference between the present perfect continuous and the past perfect continuous. In this case, in the past perfect continuous, it is something that began in the past, continue in the past, and ending in the past. But in the present perfect continuous is something that began in the past and continue in the present. So in this case, we are not changing that because we are talking about the past. Diferencia importante entre el presente perfecto continuo y el pasado perfecto continuo es que en el pasado siempre vamos a hablar de cosas que se quedaron en el pasado. Comenzaron en el pasado, continuaron en el pasado, pero al mismo tiempo terminaron en ese espacio de tiempo. Y en el presente perfecto continuo es algo que comenzó en el pasado, pero que continúa en el presente. So we have uh, some examples and it says, I have been working at the company. Let's see the example. I have been working at the company for five years. When I got the promotion. So we have the structure, have been and the verb. I had been working at the company for five years when I got the promotion. When, for, since, and before are words that you may see 
use alongside the past perfect continuous tense. So it's very common to see when for scenes and before in this kind of sentences that are very used in the perfect continuous tense. So we are going to have here the words. When for scenes and before. And we have here, we're going to mark these ones. Our words that you may see. So we have the example. It says, Martha had been walking three miles a day before she broke her leg. So we have here the uh, structure and we have here before. That is one of the words that are very used in this structure. Marta has been walking three miles a day before she broke her leg. Now, in this uh, case, we end the past uh, uh, tenses. So now we are going to enter the present tenses that we have in, there are four. The simple present, the present perfect, the present continuous, and the present perfect continuous. There are four, and we are going to develop um, one by one. So we are going to uh, change the tense, and we are not going to use the past tense. Now we are going to talk about the present tenses. So we are going to have here the present tenses. And we are going to remember number one, we have simple present. Number two, present perfect. Number three, present continuous. Number four, present perfect continuous. So we have the number one, that is the simple present. And this is very easy because we already uh, studied this. And this is one of the basic tenses that we see when we are learning English. So in this case, we are going to make a little review of this um, simple tense or a present simple. The simple present is a verb tense with two main use. We have two main uses for this one. And we use the simple present when an action is happening right now or when it happens regularly. Um, depending on the person, the simple present tense is formed by using the root form by adding S or ES to the end. So we have two main uses. Number one is when an action is happening right now. And number two, when it happens regularly. So 
those are the two uh, main uses of this simple present. Then we have the structure. And it says, the simple present tense is formed by using the root form or by adding S or ES to the end. So in this case, uh, we are going to use the rules for the third person because we are going to change the verbs adding S or ES at the end of the verb. So this is very simple and we have some examples. I feel great, Pauline loves pie. I'm sorry to hear that you are sick. So we have some examples. And we have number one, I feel great. I feel great. That's the sentence, the subject plus the verb plus the complement, and that's it. Then we have another one, Pauline loves Thai. So in this case, we're applying the rule for the third person because we are talking about she, and we are going to add the S at the end of the verb because that's the rule. And we have another one that is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that you are sick. You are sick. So those are very simple sentences because we are using the simple present and that's the, the simple of the simple. And it says typically when we want to describe a temporary action that is currently in progress, we use the present continuous. But we are going to um, learn about that in uh, something um, after. So how to form the simple present? In the simple present, most regular verbs use the root form, except in third person singular, which ends in S. So we have this one. First person singular. And it says, I write. Second person singular. You write. We are going to use the same verb to see the differences. Third person singular. And we have he, she, and it. And we are going to change this verb, adding the S at the end. Then first person plural. And it says, you write. Then we have second person plural. You write. And third person plural. They write. So it says that uh, depending of the person or depending of the subject that we are going to use, we are going to uh, write the verbs in that order. So we have this uh, person of the singular and the plural that are the, um, the subjects that we are going to use, or they are the pronouns. And this part is um, one of the uh, basic parts that we learn in this process of learning a new language because we have to, in this case, I make a mistake. First, 
Uh, and this part is uh, very basic because this is one of the um, the principal uh, things that we oh yes in this one is we not you I write you twice in this case so uh, I was saying that this is the 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 first part that we are going to learn because we need to um, understand what are the persons of the singular and the plural and how can we use the verbs because we know that uh, the verbs is the main uh, thing that we are going to learn in this process of learning English. And in this case, we have some rules for this kind of uh, verbs. And in this case, it's very common to see in simple present this kind of sentence but because it is in the name they are very simple sentences that is not very complicated to create so this is just a remember thing uh talking about the simple present for a few verbs the third person singular ends with es instead of s typically these are verbs whose root or ends in O, C, H, S, H, T, H, S, S, G, H, or Z. So in those cases, we are going to add the E, S. Para los verbos que terminan con O, C, H, S, H, T, H, S, S, G, H, O, Z, lo común es que se les agregue el E, S al final del verbo. Then, for example, in the first person singular, I go. In the second person singular, you go. Third person, he, she, it goes. In this case, it is not just adding the S at the end of the verb. In this case, it's adding the ES. Then we go, you go, they go. For most regular verbs, you put the negation of the verb before the verb. She won't go, or I don't smell anything. The verb to be is irregular. This is something that we already know. In this case, the verb to be is irregular and they have, they have some changes. For example, I am, you are, he, she, it, is. In this case, we have uh, three different uh, kinds of words to use the verb to be. Am, are, and is. This one is also one of the things that are very basic about the language. How to make the simple present negative? This is also is very simple. So the formula of making a simple present verb negative is do or does plus not, plus the root form of the verb. You can also use the contraction don't or doesn't instead of do not or does not. Example, Pauline does not want to share the pie. She doesn't think there is enough to go around. Her friends do not agree. I don't want pie anyway. To make the verb to be negative, the formula is to be plus not. I am not a pie lover, but Pauline sure is. You aren't ready for such delicious pie. So in this case, when we're using the simple present and we um, want to make the sentence negative, we can use two, um, two structures. The first one is using the do, the auxiliar do or does, and also the verb to be with the not. So in the first case, we have do not, doesn't not. And the uh, next one is I am not, um, you are not, and she is not. And how to ask a question? This is very simple. The formula for asking a question is the simple present is do, does, plus the subject, plus root form of the verb. Do you know how to buy, to bake a pie? How much does Pauline love pie? So in this case, we have the structure for the negative and for the questions. That is very simple. And we are just going to mark negative is do or does plus not plus the root, the root form of the verb. 
Or we have the verb be, does not, and for the question, we have do or does, do or does, plus the subject, plus the root form of the verb. That's very simple. And we have some examples of common verbs in simple present. And we are going to have like this. One, two, three. We're going to write five of these ones. And we have the infinitive. Then we have I, you, we, and they. So we have these uh, five examples of verbs in infinity to ask, to work, to call, to use, and to have. Then we have, how can we uh, write these verbs when we are using I, you, we, and they? We are going to use it in positive and negative. And we have ask, and in negative we have do not ask, Then we have work, do not work. Call, do not call. Use, do not use. And have, do not have. And when we are using he, she, it, we are going to add the S at the end of the verb. As, does not ask. Works. So just a, a, a note, and when we are using these uh, kind of rules in the present simple, when we are using the verbs with, um, in this case, in positive, we are going to add the S or ES or IES um, to the words. But in the case that we are using the do uh, with the third person, in this case, we are going to use does, and we are not going to change the verb because the auxiliary all already it's telling me that I am applying the rule for the third person. So in this case, when I am using the auxiliary and it changes its forms to help me to understand that I am using the uh, rule for the third person, I am not going to change the verb. Solo como un recordatorio, eh, 
cuando utilizamos los auxiliares, en este caso estamos utilizando el das para los negativos, en tercera persona, este das ya está cambiando su estructura y nos está marcando que estamos utilizando esta estructura nueva para la tercera persona del singular. En este caso, ya nuestro verbo no va a cambiar, no le vamos a agregar s ni es ni s al final, porque el do ya cambió y ahora es das y ya tomó la regla por sí solo, entonces el verbo no es necesario cambiarlo. So, in the case that we have the verb to be, in infinity it is, and when we are using you, we, you, we, they, it's um, the are, and in negative is are not, and when I am using I is am, and in negative is I am not. And for the third person is he, she, it, is, or is not. And that's the end for the present symbol. Then we are going to see the present perfect tense, but in, in this case, we are going just to uh, begin uh, the topic and tomorrow we are going to end with all of this because it is almost time, but we are going to see something. Present, present perfect tense. And we have the present perfect tense it refers to an action or a state that either occurred at the indefinite time in the past or began in the past and continue to the present. So in this case, this one, uh, it refers to an action that uh, either or cure So in this case, we have this one that it says that uh, it's to talk about an action or a state that either occurred at an um, indefinite time in the past or began in the past and continue to the present. That is the difference that we were talking about uh, the past, uh, per, uh, the, the past uh, perfect and the present perfect, because in this case, it begins in the past and continuing in the present. And we have that this tense is formed by having had or has plus the past participle of the verb. And that's the way in which we create this tense. So now we are going to uh, end the session in this um, structure. And we are going to end this topic of the verb tenses tomorrow and we are going to continue with the other uh, topic that we were that we are going to develop in this week so uh, we are going to uh, end this session here so have a good night and see you tomorrow okay. see good you night. good night good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.